Welcome to Master and Kingdom Master. I hope you liked my brand new intro you just watched because today's tutorial is to teach you how to do that with what I call my blending mode stencil technique. You'll be able to do that reveal, hide, flashing colors type of thing to make a really cool intro of your own. If you're interested, follow me on the other side of the screencast. Remember, like and subscribe. And last thing, I am giving away a few copies of Kingdom Master Premium for one month membership. And if you want to win one of those, then watch to the very end and I'll explain on the back side of the screencast how you can win one of those copies. If you're interested in making an intro like the one you just saw, then join me on the screencast. See you on the other side. If you're on an Android device, I uploaded a KineMaster project file to Google Drive. You can download it and just swap your own image and have exactly what we have here. There are instructions and a link in the YouTube description if you want to grab it now. This tutorial will move relatively quickly over layers and how to arrange them, keyframe animations, blending modes, and color adjustment. If you're not familiar with these things, you can check out my other tutorials on all of them. Let me explain what you're looking at and then we'll rebuild it. The video of me and the bridge has been turned black and white to be used as a stencil. What I mean by this is the white parts become transparent using blending modes and then everything else, the colors, the fonts, everything, sit behind it and get pulled back and forth. Think of it like this, looking into a window that has a metal frame that has a design in it and someone's pulling colors back and forth behind it so when they pass to the edge of the window, you don't see them anymore. That's what we're gonna rebuild. Now, if it doesn't make sense, don't worry, we're going to do it now. I'm starting with a new project and I add a black background as a clip for the entire length of the project. It has to be a black background for the stencil effect to work. I recommend the project being shorter than 10 seconds. Mine's 7 seconds. That is how long my intro audio is. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add what I am calling the stencil layer, but it is the part that's going to be revealed. And this can be any media that you want. If you have something that has high levels of white and dark, that's really great because what we're going to do is we're going to first desaturate using the adjustment here, and we're going to go and we're going to take all of the color out of it. I'm going to increase the contrast a bit. You could lower brightness and do lots of different things to change the white and black level, but the bottom line is you have a black and white image. The reason why why you have that is now when we go into blending modes we are actually going to send this so it disappears the white everything is going to go away when we hit either overlay or multiply. Multiply will give a darker effect when we start to put stuff underneath it. And again, as a reminder, what we're gonna do, now all we have is we have black and our stencil layer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put content in between the two of them like a sandwich to get the stencil to show off its properties using the other layers. So the next layer that we add is going to be a background color. You just select one of these because you can change the color right here anytime that you want. I'm going to set this to a little bit darker than red here, but you could do this later. Now you'll notice that it's sitting on top of everything, but now check this out. When you go into the layer order menu and we send it backwards, then it goes underneath our stencil layer. And if you stretch it out, you can see the stencil layer there. Okay, so now I'm gonna rotate it this direction. And when I hold it and move it side to side, you can see how the reveal's gonna happen. Okay, so we've got that there. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to animate that reveal with keyframes. So I have this set, so it's one second long. I'm gonna stretch it out so we can get a little bit more motion in here because we're gonna hit the add keyframe button. And we wanna create this staggered look of keyframes. Now, if you don't know, as I advance the timeline and I'm in the keyframe menu for this layer, then every time that I move it and let go of it, I'm doing this with my thumb, then it sets a new keyframe. You can see the red dot in here. So what I do here is I set one keyframe forward and then I move forward and I actually pull backwards and this allows for the staggering motion and then pull it forward a little bit. I drop a few keyframes in here to see how it looks and I'll show you what the effect looks like after we do this. I'll maybe go backwards a little bit longer here and then go forward here and then go back a little bit and then go forward a little bit and then go back one more time and then wrap it up over at the other side here. And so what that does is if you check it out, see that's that effect that I had at the beginning. This is gonna play the audio, but just so you can see the one second of this. Okay, so that was the effect that we produced seeing this.
All right, I'm gonna do something here that I really like. I'm gonna soften the edges of this by going into cropping, turning the mask on. I'm not gonna mask it, but I use the feather here to soften the edges. Now this is totally personal, so you could do something totally different, but that's a way to soften the edges and give a coolness to it. Now we're gonna duplicate this to make a multiple version of colors and we're gonna stagger them. So what we do is we go into this menu here and this allows us to duplicate the layer. You'll notice that it came to the front of the stack at this point. Point. We're going to move that behind and move it back behind the stencil layer, but first we're going to change the color. We can do it to any, and you could do it to any color you want. If you want it in blues, it could be blues. We'll put it as blues for now, even though that might not really match. And let's go ahead and we will send it to the back. And that's not my favorite, but so check this out is that to stagger the effect, you just press and hold either one of them and change its location in the timeline and then they will play in a different kind of staggering look. Another thing that you can also do is that if you hold it and with keyframes in here, if you change the length of the color, it'll just compress or expand where the positions, so it changes the speed that the keyframes actually move. And so the blue one's moving a lot faster now. I'm just gonna play it, you'll hear the music again, you can see what it looks like. It's going a little crazy there, you may wanna slow it down. But one thing that I wanna say is that we're doing this by duplicating them. You also may want to just individually add another one and make it possibly more narrow or do something different with it. Duplicating is easy and fast, but you may want to actually have separate ones. We're gonna to go to the finished one in a second, but I wanna show you this here, is that effect layers can also be keyframed as well. So when you add an effect layer, it's got the box and the handles. You can go ahead and set that, and then we go in and we can move it. We can go to our keyframe, just like we did before, go to another position and then move it over here. And so then what happens when you come across, you can't see it that great here, but the effect of the interference in this case is keyframing across that content. Uh, so that's a pretty cool way to do things as well. And to note is that the effects can also be feathered, but they are in the shape menu for some reason, and you just change the feathering here, and then you have the same feathered look on your effects. Now we're gonna go back to the completed composition, show you a couple of things, and then wrap it up and have you go to town with your own version. I've brought you back here to the completed version that you have a copy of because it took me about two and a half hours to build this. So we're just going to show you is that all of this stuff is things that are in KineMaster that you have available and they're using the same techniques of keyframe, stagger, position, reposition, and move and rearrange the layers. Going back here, the scratchy looking stuff that you have is just effect layers and everything else is just stuff that's part of KineMaster. One thing that I really want you to notice is how white and black in interact when you're doing this because white and black are the key to the mask showing hiding because they're hiding against the black or they're showing against the screen. And that's really cool to play around with if you start doing this on your own. So it's up to you now. You can take this one and change the color of it, put your own picture in, move things around a little bit, or use the technique to do some really cool stuff on your own. And I'd love for you to show me what you did learning with this technique. All right, so I hope that made sense, but if it didn't, put some questions in the comments. I always get back to people. And if you make something cool with it, then post that, because I'd love to check it out. So if you're here to win one of the three copies of the free subscriptions for a month, what I want you to do is I want you to, before June 26th, uh, put in the comments, say, I want to win, that's all you need to do. And then I will randomly select on June 26th, three people who put in, I want to win and I'll notify you. So remember, make some really cool stuff with KineMaster. Ask me any questions, share any of your content, get out there and make awesome stuff. And I'll see you the next time. Thanks for stopping by. KineMaster.